in the last couple months to get them signed, sealed, and delivered today is great. I um, think they fill needs for us. I think they're certainly great fits for uh, what this place is. And, um, and uh, you know, uh, I feel they can be kind of impact freshmen um, like the current freshman class is. Um, so uh, thrilled to know we got them signed. And, uh, and then you kind of move on. And we continue to recruit seniors, obviously. We're still recruiting. That never ends. Yeah. And then the other two, the other two you didn't really have right. extended relationships with. Yeah, it kind of tells you every time I say, I tell people we try and make recruiting this exact science, and it's so far from it. You know, TJ was a guy we worked long and hard on, and it paid off in the spring. Um, you know, you know, we didn't really know who Johnny Mooney was until about August 15th when Billy Donovan called me um, and, his, and said his dad was really reaching out to – uh, to us and what we do recruit him for three weeks and we got him um, reminds me a little of the Tory Jackson recruiting you know you recruit him for three weeks he called you in August and you got him um, and and Nick is another great story we're up there watching another prospect and um, you end up you know not knowing what you're walking into at Orangeville and you're walking into a lot of prospects and you're just really impressed with Nick and his flexibility that he can play any of those positions so a great example of you know, you can recruit a guy for two years, get him, and he turns out to be not too good a player. You can recruit a guy for two years, get him, and he's a really good player. And you recruit a guy for three weeks, get him, and he becomes maybe better than all of the above. It's, um, again, back to it sure ain't an exact science, and you're living day to day in recruiting. When you go yeah. and sit down like, whoa, who's this kid? Yeah, yeah, we watched him, you know, for two hours there, Anthony Solomon and I, and, and I'm, you know, he's just kind of growing on you. And I went over and talked to him afterwards, and he was going to visit Northeastern that weekend. And um, what really struck me was, you know, I knew that Penn wanted to get him, but the financial package wasn't going to be good enough for him, so he wasn't going to go to Penn. So I knew he was a great student. And so... After being impressed with how he played for two hours, I started, I said, what are you interested in studying? He said, business. And I said, well, you know, the Mendoza Business School is number one. And he kind of cut me off. He said, no, I know, Coach, I've done my research. I know you guys have the best business school. And, um, you know, so I landed in Philadelphia the next day en route to watch a junior. And and uh, my message to him was, don't do anything crazy this weekend. I said, no, I'm going to stop messing around and called the coach. And we offered him that next day. And. Fortunately, we were able to get him, but he's, you know, he's old. God, he's old. He's a man involved with Canada basketball. Um, you know, he could play any of the positions. He guards. He's athletic. A little bit story-like, you know, feel for the game, skilled, got some toughness about him. Um, you know, just gives you a lot of flexibility um, with, with what he brings. Was there ever any uh, hesitation with John Mooney, considering how that recruitment came about? It's not like you guys were out evaluating him like you did Nicole or the other guys. Well, my guys remembered him a little bit, you know, because after Billy called me, I didn't remember the name. When Billy called me and said, do you know Johnny Mooney? I thought he was trying to endorse a coach for me or something. And I, you know, he was off the board in 10th grade, you know, an Irish Catholic guy. If he would stayed on the board, we probably would have known about him, but he, he disappeared quickly. But, um, you know, I talked to Coach Inglesby after I talked to Billy, and he said, uh, you know, they really liked him when they saw him when he was young. Now, he was off the circuit because Team Florida didn't have a team. So not only was he committed, but he didn't, he didn't play with the, in the summer. And he was fine with it. He went up to Florida and worked out with their guys. And at the end of the summer, everything changed um, to our benefit. But, um, you know, as he was described, and I saw some videotape of him, um, you know, felt, yeah, I kept seeing Kerrs. There's it's a lot of Rob Kerrs uh, in him. I mean, even facially, dark hair, the same body type, similar game. Um, and so, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, we, 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 I think in this profession, you know, I've tried to not overanalyze too much. Nick is a good example, Johnny Moon. I mean, if you got a guy like sees it, jump on it, you know, you sit there and twiddle your thumbs and think about it and analyze it, and you lose momentum or an opportunity. In the spring, you talked, to, I think, uh, right before Selection Sunday, 
about some of the guys in the past, Conathan, Heron, Gody, Hansborough, who'd like to recruit with the chip on their shoulder. Do you feel this class has that feel? Yeah, I think they do a little bit. You know, none of them will be McDonald's All-Americans. Um, you know, what is what, what is uh, TJ's up there somewhere, 50s, 70s, 80s? Uh, I think Johnny Mooney would be, you know, in the 50s to 70s if people had seen him on the circuit. But that's great that he's not because any – has to he has a little chip on his shoulder and Nick's a real mystery man because he's playing uh, about you know north of the border um, so yeah I, I think these guys all a little bit of a chip I mean they're they're really good high school players um, none of them are going to play in the elite all-star games they're going to play in some good ones we'll get some guys in the Derby Classic and I think when they play against those top 25 guys those you know those guys guys that you've mentioned in our program have always been very motivated to play against the, the guys that uh, were rated higher. Boy, high school rankings is a – that's a shot in the dark, man. You know, just, just – you know, I think that's what that is. But anyways, if I can use it as a chip on the shoulder, I'm going to use it every day. <laughs> Coach, you benefited in the past from bringing in a point guard as a freshman that can play and help the team and having the senior or – junior veteran point guard kind of guy. Right. How important is the timing with Jackson as a senior next year? Yeah, it's really, really important. And I think that's one of the things TJ saw was there's an opportunity that Demetrius Jackson, you know, would not be with us. And it opens up uh, a, a great opportunity for him as a freshman. I think the one thing that's been encouraging with our current team is how Matt Farrell is playing. And so that if you had the two of them next year to handle that position, if Demetrius goes, I'm looking in right now with the way Matt Farrell is trending and what I think we have and TJ, I'm like, okay, I'm feeling I'm, I know we're losing, we could lose one heck of a player in Demetrius, but man, I feel pretty good about manning that spot with those two guys. What is Farrell showing you now that maybe he didn't last year? He's been much better with the ball, Tim. His assist to turnover is much better. I thought you know, he just turned the ball over too much to be the quarterback and the, and the point guard last year. Now, in fairness to him, he was playing against Demetrius Jackson's ball pressure every day. So, you know, uh, I've always remembered that in the evaluation. But I think he's made great progress there. He's become more of a lead guard, talking, setting things up, not just playing the game, like getting guys in position, calling sets. Um, and then, you know, the other thing is he, he doesn't miss many open shots. I mean, he is a shot maker when it's a good shot. Uh, I like him playing with Demetrius. I, I like coming in, and, and it gives us a little bit of – it gives Demetrius a little bit of that blow off the ball that he got with Jaron handling. He slides off the ball a little bit. He comes off some screens on the baseline, and he's not grinding with it in his hands all the time. So it's helped our spacing. It puts a scorer on the floor because he can score, and it helps Jackson, I think. Mike, what's your approach going forward with a couple seniors you're still recruiting? Yeah, full speed ahead. You know, we've got some big guys we're on, and, you know, we, we would um, want to sign one more guy. That's the goal. And <clears throat> could that be early? Maybe. Um, could it be late? Yeah, it could be late too. But, uh, you know, I think we'll keep evaluating seniors. Um, and then uh, even really since we've had the three commitments, uh, you know, I've concentrated on the junior class too. So you're into the next phase of juniors. But, um, but yeah, we, we, we're full speed ahead on uh, some big guys that are still out there in the 16 class. And how much impact did you see from last year's run and playing Kentucky close in the Elite Eight on the recruiting trail? Yeah, I think it's helped us. You know, there's no question it's helped us. Um, you know, we're still going to kind of get the guys we get here. You know, I don't know if we're going to totally reinvent the wheel and, and three one and duns are going to show up in a year. It's just not going to happen here. And, and I don't think it would be right for us, I'm, I'm, you know, in our mission. That's, it, it's not right. And it, and it ain't going to happen, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, but I think we've trended up a little bit. You know, we're um, style of play, you know, the offensive style of play has been, you know, it's always been there. I think it was really showcased more at a higher level. So that's gotten, you know, more attractive. <laughs> Is a one and done or two and done something you might have been open to three, five, ten years ago, or has that changed? Well, I'm all, I've always been open to a one and done. Always. I mean, Greg Oden, we played around with. He was a one and done. Um, we've all yeah, the ones that we've investigated um, up until currently. The, the a couple guys we're still recruiting that aren't four year guys. Um, 
you know, we kind of, it just went its de- separate ways where it wasn't going to, just wasn't going to fit. So every year I have an open mind to that, you know, and, and we must have an open mind to that. But for the most part, we're going to keep getting those guys that kind of, he mentioned that are a little chip on the shoulder, come in, get better over time, grow them in our system, get them older. That, that's, that's been the rhythm of the program. Now that you've been through the recruiting cycle in the ACC a couple times, do you feel like facilities, has it, maybe how you expected it to be with recruits compared to other programs, has that changed at all? Well, in the ACC, everybody has all the ammunition. You know, as I've said, we're not playing against some poor little Catholic schools that uh, in the Big East, some, some of the Catholic schools didn't have much. Um, yeah, so, and I think that's why it's important for us with this practice facility, and we are in a very aggressive fundraising mode right now for that. Um, and that is needed because the league we are in has all the ammunition. And if you've looked around at how this league is recruiting, it's recruiting at a high level too. So to keep pace, um, we got to keep investing and grinding and doing that. You, like you gave us a comparison with the other two guys. Gibbs, does he – who does – Gibbs is Tory Jackson-like, uh, probably shoots it a little better at this age, but has got good strength, a nose for the ball. Uh, I love his toughness. You know, when you're the youngest of those three brothers and you have to play one-on-one-on-one on one on one in the gym – and you know, fight for everything and, and get pushed around. The kid has uh, a real toughness about him, that I-95 edge that I like to refer to. Um, shoots it, feel for the game, great hand, you know, defensive hands like Torrey can get in there and strip. And again, when you play where he played growing up, AAU and high school wise, man, you played a high level of competition and I think you're really ready. Comparisons to his brother are uh, fair. He's more of a point guard than the other two. The other two were were really kind of more. I thought they were more scoring guards, you know, or combo guards, two guards. You know, Sterling certainly now at uh, Connecticut. Ashton, who we had great battles with. Those guys were a little bit more off the ball. Uh, TJ is more a, a guy with the ball first. Now he could play off the ball like Matt Farrell and him could be playing together. You know, just like Jackson and Matt Farrell could be playing together this year. Considering the possibility of Demetrius leaving after this season, how much more important was it to get a point guard in this class versus leaving it to the 2017 class? Oh, no, we really had to get a guy. There's no question. And that's why we focus so much on guards. And then it got to be TJ, and we got him in and really tried to capitalize, and we were fortunate enough to close it out. You know, I, I don't think I, – I didn't pay attention to much else in the 16 class in the spring because it was like we got to get guards, and then it became we got to get T.J. Gibbs. And fortunately, we got him in in that, that, that eight, late April weekend. I think it was late April, early May, right before exams started. And that was a good time to get him in. He was ready to make a decision, and um, it gave some – you know, it, I was relieved that, okay, we got a, we got a point guard there. And that was before Matt Farrell started doing what he was doing for us. So, you know, it was even better peace of mind. Now, you know, I feel like we have some depth there with those two guys. And correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think you ever signed in, in your time at Notre Dame. What's your thought process with that like as far as juggling things and balancing yeah. that Demetrius does yeah. today? Yeah, I think I think, you know, we, we um we've always gone into this one with let's try and get four guys and work it out on the back end. And we certainly know where Demetrius's stock is. Now, if it plays out that way, um, you know, uh, 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 as I, Troy Murphy's business decision was a great business decision. It may just have to be a great business decision. And no one would be more supportive than me and us of, of Demetrius. So, you know, I, I, didn't want to be, uh, I didn't want to be too conservative. I wanted to be aggressive with this. And um, so that's kind of how we've gone into it with let's get four if we can get four. You've said recruiting's not an exact science, but I think this is the last, at least the last three years now, where you've gotten, you've made sure to get your number one guy on the board. Yeah. What, what is that, what is that yeah. for you as a program where you, where you get your number yeah. one guy and everything else kind of play? Yeah, it, it, ha- it really has helped us. There's no question that we've been able to get, get a guy. You know, I always tell that first guy, boy, if, you know, 
you, you shape our class. You know, if you can be the guy to put your stick in the ground first, it shapes our class. And I, I feel good that I think we've concentrated on the right guy to close on, you know, and get. And then you kind of, you're filling in around him. So I, I think we've made the right decisions. I think we've been realistic who we can get. Uh, and I think we've been, you know, we've been good about um, – being aggressive when it was time to get a decision, you know, finding out when it, when is it time to get a decision? You know, it was, uh, of course, Burns and Ryan, it was in the middle of summer a year ago, and the, uh, TJ was different. You mentioned Farrell and um, Demetrius playing together with the game Friday and Bolts going live. Who are some, some other options you want to see play together as you kind of work your way through this? Yeah, I think, you know, Matt Ryan has given us really good stuff. That's just a weapon off the bench. And he helps stretch the floor for us. Um, the Gebbin, um, Martin Gebbin, Z uh, Martin Gebbin, Austin Torres kind of combo. Who is it? Is it him? Is it him? What What's it call for? I think they both have practiced like they deserve to be in there. But what does the situation call for? And I've tried to get all them through there. And even an Austin Burgett, because he kind of steadies us. You know, he's you know he's on my mind. I mean, he, he's uh, on my mind. So you know, those are those are kind of the combinations that we've we've uh, kind of worked with here in the last couple days. And um, uh, and and you know, it's great because hey, man, now it counts. Now now it really counts. And um, but, uh, you know, I think we're always looking at, you know, how do we help ourselves offensively sometimes, substituting-wise, where we get another shooter scorer on the floor that then stretches the floor and spaces the floor. Um, even though I've been, you know, Bonzi continues to make pra progress sp spacing it as a four-man. I, I just think I don't want to lose sight of him playing inside the arc, too, because he's so good around the bucket and, you know, and he becomes the big guy, and we have VJ or Matt Ryan as the stretch four. So we've got to keep looking at that. And then when you do that, it puts a big log jam on your big guys. You know, now your big guys are stacked on top of each other, and how do you get them minutes, and, and how do you keep those engaged that maybe aren't playing early through the year? What did you see from half-court basketball session on Friday, and then also your film study as to – how you can be better in the half court than what you were. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we got to reverse the ball more. I thought we, we you know, we, we played a little too fast. I think this happened so much early in the season with our program, not this particular team, is those first couple times the lights are on and we just we play too fast. We don't reverse it. So we, we did some stuff where we couldn't take a shot unless we reversed the ball twice. Um, that is such a good principle for us, reversing the ball. We couldn't take a shot until we got a post touch. And we wanted Zach to kick it out sometimes, just to flatten it, kick it out, and maybe go post on the other side and get it. Those were like two of the things we really, really tried to um, work on. And I think that continues to be something that we have to spend time with. Um, and then getting the right personnel on the floor for certain parts of the game um, to be different offensively or maybe more potent offensively. Because what you were concerned about the other night, was it because what you were concerned of was it, the, the offense wasn't, it didn't look easy? Yeah, I think um, I, thought we, I thought we took some quick shots. I thought, I thought we could have got a better shot. 30-second clock's not a 20-second clock. You know, is what I tried to tell them. We, we, we almost got it up there a little quick, you know, and, and to understand that when you get into this half court basketball mode that we do in practice, it's a grind when you have to do it. Now, I've got to go. I've got to have a good balance point of that because arguably two our two best players thrive in transition. So we, you know, when we can get out and run and, and get, you know, that's when a Demetrius Jackson gets stuff early and doesn't have to run into bodies. That's when Zach August gets some clean stuff and gets himself going. So, you know, as much as you got to learn to grind, we got to continue to talk about getting stops or getting made field goals in quick, which we've emphasized from day one to get Demetrius and Zach moving and going and to not play against a set defense. When you have to play against a set defense like Virginia's or Syracuse's for 40 minutes, it, it's hard. you got to get some easy ones. And I think we felt between the 30-second clock and the personnel we have, 
let's get it in and go, 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 and get down that floor so we're not having to grind as much. What's your uh, Friday night opponent's best quality? You know, they got really good guards. This is a good matchup for, I think, two of the best defensive guards in the country and my two guys, Jackson and Vastoria. Um, these are older guys. They're city guys, one from uh, Philly and the other from Baltimore. Uh, excuse me, one from New York and one from Baltimore. Um, their foreman is a kid who started here as a freshman and banged against Jack Cooley. We were looking at that tape the other day. He's been around a little bit. They're coming off their best season. They went at Rutgers last year. Um, they, they went at Duquesne. Their program is feeling good about themselves. Um, so, you know, I, I, one of my themes today is, like, expect a hard game and embrace a hard game. You know, like, this, I think this is going to be hard and good. Let's see how we react in this setting. But the guards are uh, the guards are a key. They're 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 good. They're older. They played a lot of college basketball. I think that's a great matchup. Those two guys against our two guys. Thank you, gang. See you Friday. Thanks.